As an eager crowd watch, we see Fox Williams, dynamic Mr. Football, lead his team onto the field. And that's dynamic tension in the air at the moment as the crowd are going mad. And there goes the final siren, and it's Port Adelaide again, creating an Australian record, a South Australian and an Australian record. Port's history, I think, is probably as rich as any football club in the country. The number of flags that they've won, and just that sort of grudging respect that people have for them. It comes with being successful and being proud and almost being arrogant. You know, the premierships almost belong to us. The crowd was roaring and the record goes down that Port Adelaide have won the 1965 Grand Final. There is a, a distinct culture there and a culture that probably 99% of the clubs around Australia envy. It's clear, has a bounce. What a luxury, two bounces. He's running straight into the open goal. And bends it to magnificent football Port Adelaide. They have no real idea on this side of the border the place in history of the Port Adelaide Football Club, which is probably the most significant institution in the history of Australian football in this country. They were ruthless, physically ruthless. Had a, a very good um, level of skill as well, but they're hard, this hard. When you're as successful as Port's been, there's that allure of just being part of this great footy club. You know, you just have to be in it to understand it. It might be a little difficult for somebody from the outside coming through and embracing all that, but really I don't think it takes that long. I think once you spend a little bit of time here and you see a couple of games and you see what Port Adelaide's all about and the pride that we have in this football team and the will and desire that we have for them to win, um, losing is just not accepted here at this club. It never has been in 150 years, and I dare say in the next 150 it won't be either. It's in your blood, it's in your heart, it's in your soul, and we live it every day. If I had to really narrow it down to one thing, Port Adelaide is about winning. And I'll say that till the cows come home forevermore. The minute you deviate from that is the minute you're giving yourself an out and you fall into the world of mediocre. It's not Port Adelaide. It is about winning. And that mentality has been feared. Uh, it's been accused of being arrogant. The difference is it's an absolute commitment and a belief that you will win. Port Adelaide, 39. That ball's coming down from Andy Poplicia's kick. Linnell glues the ball back towards Poplicia. He can run into the goal square. He's got Tim Evans out on his own. Finds that player 25 metres out from goal. Tim Evans. He's got five to his credit so far. He's got six to his credit. Listen to the Port fans roar. Port Adelaide, there it is. Port Adelaide is the Premiers in 1977. Centenary year. And triumph for John Cale. And when you have that mentality of winning, it's contagious. And it just spreads right across the playing group. And if you think that way, you end up becoming that way. So in the first 16 years of my life, Port Adelaide played in 14 grand finals and won nine of them. So they're the first 16 years of my life. Certainly in most of those nine that they won, they were narrow margins. You know, they were beating West Adelaide or Norwood by, I think, between three points and two and a half goals or something. And most of them were desperately close. And I can visualise now we lived in a tiny house in Ferriton Park and I can see my mother jumping on the table when Port kicked, hit the front in the grand final and things like that. And, you know, I'm 66, so... but that memory is vivid. A coach is able to get inside a Port Adelaide's player's head because they're motivated by the, the history of the club and the traditions of the club, you know. If you don't lay it on the line for Port Adelaide, if you're a Port Adelaide player, it does mean a lot more and if you played for, you know, the Crows and came from Melbourne or 
Perth. Now, we all expect all those things, and we expect you to fight until you can't even run anymore. We've got two reserves. Let me know when you've just had it, and you can go right off. But don't stay there unless you're going to do your job. Now, let's get out and do that. So when you hit the ground, you were expected to give 100%, not take shortcuts, not run around the edge, go and commit yourself, win the 50-50. And that's what we did. We wanted to win, we had desire, we just didn't accept defeat. You never saw players avoiding contact or, or not backing back into a pack because that was the way they did it here. And I think not only did our supporters expect that, but opposition teams knew that was coming. And that's what made it so difficult to play against. And then, you know, I played seniors at the age of 16. And I played with some really hard-nosed grown men. And their expectation didn't matter that you were 16. It just mattered that you were wearing the prison bars that day. And the expectation on a 16-year-old that day was the same as the expectation on a 30-year-old. Age didn't matter. What you did for a job didn't matter. Uh, nothing else mattered on the day you were playing the game. It's just about what your commitment level was that day. Powerful screw punt right up towards the full court. What a diving mark. Thanks, Hurt. The Port Adelaide Football Club being here and being a strong, successful club, uh, it was very much recognised that it was a working class football club, which is the people in the area were working class people. Everyone's parents worked at uh, GMH or on the wharves or the power station or you know, in factories and things like that. And it was that having something here that stood for you and was successful and could go on to the, the statewide stage you know, at, at that stage. Sort of, I stepped into an environment where the history of the club was, it was set in stone. So you just came in and you followed it. And if you didn't follow it, just go somewhere else. I knew nothing about the Magpies. I knew nothing about the history until I come over here when I was 18 years old. And honestly, it was a complete change of mindset. It was, wow, this is, this club has history. This club is a community club it, it, and it has that feel as soon as you walk in the doors here, that you belong. When you ran out to the Oval, I'll, no longer was I playing for George Fiarchi, I was playing for all the supporters, you know. As soon as you went out there, you're accountable to them. You know, they expect success, the members, supporters. You know, you went out there, they'd, they'd be behind you 110% if you won. If you didn't, they'd be on you as well, you know. They'd let you know either way, they expected success. When everyone wins, it's fantastic. Uh, and you could see the enjoyment they got uh, and the pride that they took in the team, their team. They ran around with the trophy, but I know everyone else in the grandstand, we, we, felt, we felt like we were part of it. You know, it was just one big family. And uh, that was a special thing about the Port Adelaide Footy Club.